Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Kia Hyundai channel. My name is Gabby. And I'm Charlotte. In today's video, it's a different one, and it's one of those spot the difference games, except this time, challenge level, expert. Very hard. <laughs> very, very hard. And as per usual, we have our video playing in the back. That's not good. Love so, that. So, Charlotte, we're doing this as a live stream today, right? Absolutely. And do we go live every single weekday at 2 p.m.? Yes, we do Eastern Standard Time. And what do we do on those live streams? live streams we like to use them as a time to interact with you guys we also mm -hmm. like to answer your questions and go in one vehicle two vehicles or pretty much anything in the Kia or Hyundai lineup absolutely so we are called the Kia Hyundai channel for that a reason, reason. <laughs> we live stream in-depth car reviews we do tips tricks everything you could think of we've done a video on it good this is a good but what if you want to buy one of these cars oh we can do that too so we're not just a youtube channel we actually have three stores we're at Brantford kia today and that's where me and charlotte are based that's also where our studio is but we also have two hyundai stores so mm -hmm. Brantford hyundai and owen sound hyundai all of these dealerships are located within ontario which is in canada, canada. and uh, we can sell and service all throughout ontario so. but wait do you guys charge dealer markup we don't Perfect. <laughs> Sold. All right, now that that's out of the way, we'll actually get into this walkthrough. It's going to be a little bit different because we are, of course, comparing two vehicles. So we're going to start off with the exteriors of both. I'll also talk about mm -hmm. the powertrain and some of the safety features that come standard. We're also going to spend a little bit of time looking at the differences between the two. <laughs> Trying to find them. And then Charlotte's going to take a look inside and talk about the comfort, the safety, the tech, and the overall vibe of the cabin. For Absolutely. Cars. And the vehicles that we have with us today, we have the 2024 Kia Sorento, and we have the introductory trim, the LX, and then the mm -hmm. EX, which is one step above that. And we want to know which one you guys think would be better for you, or what yeah. changes would you make. We'll also share our perspective at the end, and also at the end we have a dedicated portion to do Q&A to answer your guys' questions in real time. Awesome. Well, let's so, go. Let's get into it. I'm going to start off okay like ah, that is not good around price points so 38,975 for the LX that we have over here and then the EX is just over 42,000 Canadian so there is quite the price difference but when I talk about the differences that are between the vehicles themselves you'll see why so first things first let's talk about the base or the LX trim absolutely love it for 2024 there has been a refresh so we got a brand new headlight and grille design everything okay Char um our quality isn't looking super great oh that's pretty standard yeah <laughs> uh what happened to the camera not clear is someone oh uh oh bump bump yes next day checking we're just checking our stream Making sure things are okay. Is it or no? Uh, it looks like it's getting a little bit better, at least on mine. All right, but... let's keep rolling. And uh, if you guys are still watching, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. All right, so 2024 had a fresh new look. Um, we do have quite a few new trim options too, but the LX and EX we've had for a while. So first things first, I always like to point out this beautiful LED daytime running light. We had it in the previous model Sorento, but it wasn't in this format. So this is called our new star map styling when it comes to lighting. And you get LED bulbs on just about everywhere on the base model trim. Now there are a couple differences between this headlight and the headlight on the EX, and I'll talk about that once we get to the EX. But let's take a closer look. They're vertically stacked LED LEDs, like I mentioned, super bright and a very sharp cutoff. Another thing we get already on an entry level trim is forward parking sensors. So as I inch closer to something, whether it be another vehicle or maybe a wall, my car will warn me inside the vehicle to let me know. Gabby, you're getting a bit too close. Another thing that they added for an entry level trim is a forward radar sensor. So that's going to be utilized for things like forward collision avoidance, but also Charlotte, smart cruise control with stop Woo. and go. Something that you don't often hear is available on an entry trim level car, especially not at this price point. When it comes to the grill and the styling, you do get this beautiful kind of, I don't want to say chrome, but silver differentiation to kind of block out all this black that we have going on. But something that we'll notice here is this is black plastic and it's not body color. It's just almost like an unpainted plasticky finish. So that's going to be a difference on the EX that we'll look at in a few minutes. We also have again that silver style along the bottom of the vehicle, just under your grills. And our skid plates are just pretty regular on this trim. Let's take a look at the wheels. This is a hot topic. I'm not overly excited to talk about the wheels on this model, but they get better guys. Don't worry. So these are 17 inch alloys. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but what's nice is that even though this is, this is an introductory, as you do get an alloy, it could have been a hubcap, which, yeah. Yikes. If you look at a Toyota RAV4 entry, obviously a different size class, but there are steel wheels with a cap. I much prefer an alloy. And the best part is if you're not a fan of this wheel design, use them for your winter tires or simply 
swap them out for something else. Yeah. It's the easiest thing to change I was going to say, car. what's the easiest thing to change on a car? <laughs> Absolutely. But nonetheless, this car does have some great uh, power and also capability. So we live in Canada. All trim levels of this rental come standard with all-wheel drive and terrain mode. So we get snow, mud, and sand with also a sport mode, an eco mode, that kind of thing. So you can really customize the drive of this vehicle and make sure it works for you and your driving conditions. So all-wheel drive is a great thing to have. We'll move upwards now and talk about the engine. So I'm not going to pop the hood on this one because it's a manual, we got a hood strut, so it's not hydraulic and that's a lot of work. But I'll talk about what's under here. It's a 2.5 liter four cylinder gasoline engine with 191 horse and 181 pound feet of torque. You also get a traditional eight speed automatic transmission. So that means you're gonna get very, very smooth shifting on this car. The reason why I'm not overly excited about this powertrain is because the EX blows it out of the water. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about the EX in just a few minutes. <laughs> Let's keep talking about this vehicle though and what makes it so special. For styling, I think it looks quite nice. So we again have that silver accent along the body. We get this little, I don't even know what to call that, but it's an accent. And then along our windows, we do have more of that trim. You get roof rails on this trim level. They're just the flush body style ones and you get the increased or bridge style on our X-line trims. Coming up to the back, we get rear parking sensors along your plastic bumper. So again, it's not body color, but it's still, it hides well, especially if you are getting a black exterior paint. But the parking sensors make a big, big difference. So I talked about the drive, I talked about the transmission. Let's talk about size now. So these vehicles, they're the same size. Not a lot to talk about when it comes to cargo space because you're gonna be working with the same amount until you get into seating. So we'll raise the, uh, not hood, but trunk back here. And you'll see we have two seats in the rear. All trim levels of the Sorento are gonna give you three rows of seating. What the big difference is, once you actually take a look at the second row, you're gonna get three seats over there. So it's a seven seater versus every other trim of the Sorento, which is gonna offer you six seats. Now that might be a benefit or a negative for you. If you really need all seven seats, obviously you're gonna go for this one. But let's say you often drive maybe five people. Although your family would still fit in this one, you won't be able to use a lot of cargo space back here because you'll always have one of these rear seats up. Think about airports and luggage. It's not the easiest, but um, I do like how there is still a seven seater configuration. I just wish it would also translate to the higher level trims as well too. So that's about it for this one here. Let's work our way over to the EX. So the EX. Let's start at the back, I guess, because that's where we are. You do get a power lift gate, which is something that is quite special to get in a vehicle that's still lower on the trim level scale. So it is a customizable to your height. If you want it a little higher, a little lower, you can grab it, manually adjust it, and then set it with this button right over here. You get those two seats back here, like I mentioned, but of course, if you are seating five passengers, someone has to sit in the third row. It better not be your tallest passenger. Both of these cars also come with a temporary spare tire. So under here, We'll have our kit. And then the actual tire is located underneath the vehicle. So you'll just have to take it out. <laughs> Charlotte will show up. There's a difference on your bumper. Yep. Oh, I missed it. Oh, guys, there we go. Okay. And I understand I didn't show the entirety of the seating. Oh, that seat's reclined. That's Give me so a second. Tragic. Of course, of course. <laughs> All right, so I'll move the seat up a bit. Here, I'll just, do you want me to pull this one? Oh, it's okay. okay. So one of the benefits of the captain's chairs is they're actually very easy to move. So if you do have people going in and out of the third row, captain's chairs just slide out in their individual, right? Now that we have these two folded down, you'll be able to see what the full cargo capacity looks like. Oh, there's something in there. Never mind. Pretend that seat's completely flat. All right, lots of cargo space. And then back here, there are USB-C chargers. So we'll have Charlotte show that. And sorry, Charlotte, <laughs> she zoned out. <laughs> Um, so USB-C chargers, cup holders, and some storage pockets. You also get seatbelt clips so you can tuck them in if you don't want them in the way. This is great if you are moving just cargo and not necessarily passengers. So pretty handy. Let's work our way over to the front. I want to talk a little bit about the headlights. So like I mentioned, both of them are going to have LED headlights. Both of them are going to have that really striking amber daytime running light. But if you take a closer look at these guys, you'll see four bulbs vertically stacked. They're very bright, <laughs> very, very bright. And these are called projection headlamps. And while both of them actually feature, of course, LEDs, these ones are gonna be sharper and they're gonna be brighter. And that's because of how they are actually built. So they both use mirrors to, again, project the light, but this one is also gonna have a cutoff lens. So it's not gonna go into places where the light's not necessarily needed. And they're slowly, not slowly, slightly tilted towards 
the road. So you'll actually have the road illuminated and less so other drivers. I'm just watching Charlotte, she's laughing. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so um, with uh, regular <laughs> reflection style headlights, you'll get a, a bit of dark spots and they're not necessarily angled towards where you need it most at some points. So you'll find a lot more, if you've ever been on the opposite end of a very, very bright headlight, you know they can be blinding. You'll find that more so on reflection style where these ones are more projected towards the road and where you need them most. So some people may not even be able to tell a difference, some people will, but that's the difference for me. Rumor has it, if you wear your solar eclipse glasses and stare into them, you can see light coming through. Oh, <laughs> so headlights, small difference visually, but big difference depending on what your driving looks like. Mm -hmm. The engine, another huge difference. If you're someone who needs a little bit more power, you have to get this powertrain. 2.5 liter turbocharged engine gives you 281 horse with 311 pound foot of torque. And the transmission, this is a hot take. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's an eight speed wet type dual clutch transmission. So although it has two clutches, no clutch pedal, you just get your brake and your gas, so it's good old automatic style, no um, gear shift either. Well, there is a gear shift, but no, you know what I mean. All right, <laughs> so that is something that you should definitely want to research if you are gonna purchase this vehicle. It doesn't have a lot of extra care, but there are some things you should be mindful about when it does come to dual clutch transmissions. Have we so, done a video on that? Oh, absolutely, you guys know it. There are front parking sensors, rear parking sensors on this trim, and let's take a look at the wheels, because these wheels, whew, they make the car look so much better. So these are 20 inch alloys and you get a mix of that dark and silver finish. And while we're on the topic of silver finish, if you pay attention to the grill on this vehicle, or I guess what's encasing the grill, this is actually a different finish than the LX. I know you probably can't tell because our video quality is just that good. <laughs> but you have more of a flat plasticky look on here and that one is gonna look more like a metal. So mm -hmm. a, bit, a bit nicer, a bit more premium and that's the whole thing. It's a higher trim level, it's gonna look more premium. Same thing with your bottom bumper. This is gonna be that black plastic that I mentioned and this one is gonna be body color. So if you get a blue Sorrento, this will be blue, black Sorrento. We probably shouldn't have used these colors for today's video to showcase the differences, but that's what we had. <laughs> All right, uh, both these vehicles also feature nine airbags, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, forward collision avoidance assist, lots and lots of tech, lots and lots of features. They're both all wheel drive with terrain modes like I mentioned. And now Charlotte will talk about the interior of the two. <laughs> yeah, you got it. <laughs> so although it may seem like there wasn't too much to love on the exterior of the LX, which don't worry, there definitely is, uh, I'm super impressed with the interior every single time because there's so many cool features that come standard on this vehicle. And when it comes to the EX, it's going to build off of the foundation that this lays, unless of course it's going to add or replace a feature. So let's take a look inside. And guys, can you guess why there's a plastic bag on the seat? Wait, are you telling me that's not from factory? No, it's not. These are cloth seats and uh, someone who we do not know who left this vehicle with the window down outside last night and it poured rain. <laughs> so it's soaking wet. So beauty of cloth seats. The they, beauty of cloth seats. They absorb. Now, I will say it is powered. So we get to see a powered driver seat standard, which is great. Unfortunately, we do not have that for the passenger seat, just for the driver's seat. But again, that is a great feature to have. Um, I guess I'm getting into the car. Chris wants to know who he wants us to blame or who we should blame. Uh, Tim, probably. Tim. Yeah, probably Tim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's also tons of other features that we're gonna see, namely software is going to be a huge, huge factor in this vehicle. So I'll show the steering wheel first and then we'll talk a little bit more about that. We have a, just a regular steering wheel here. It's not leather wrapped, it's not heated, anything like that. But you still do have your media controls, your driving controls like smart cruise control, lane keep assist, lane follow assist, as Gabby mentioned. Behind us, we do have our new software, so a digital instrument cluster with a 4.2 inch screen in the center, digital uh, tachometer, digital speedometer, and you're still able to cycle through all of these screens like you would any other vehicle. So this screen is the same on the EX, right? Yes, screen is the same. All right, so no technology differences really nope. between the two. It's more so comfort. Comfort and passenger space. Awesome. I'll have Gabby come around and we'll talk about more in this vehicle. If you guys wanna see another hidden difference, Check this out, black plastic. And then this is body color. So yeah, that's quite different, quite the difference. All right, now let's go back. <laughs> Keyless entry also for the door. So as long as the keys are on you, you can give this a push and it'll lock or unlock your 
car. That's what I was just going to say. It's got keyless entry. <laughs> it's a proximity key, which means you also have a push button start. And you have standard remote start. So standard pull, remote start? Yeah, standard remote start, girl. Isn't that nice? So the nice thing is that with Kia's Remote Start, when you have it integrated into your key fob, you don't need a Kia Connect subscription to utilize it too, so you can still use the same great feature. Now let's talk about interior. So when it comes to our infotainment center, this is going to be the same on the EX. You're going to have a new software that is super responsive, wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and this beautiful 12.3 inch screen, which I absolutely love. You'll also notice that it has a 10 degree slant towards the driver, so very driver focused. I feel like I know what you're laughing at. But <laughs> Maybe I don't, but. I feel like the real reason why we do these live streams is we just, it's always fun. We love to get humbled daily yes. by people. <laughs> uh, when it comes to down below, you can see we do have climate control, or climate control and media control. So we don't have the switchable, well we do, just in a different version, um, because we don't have dual climate control, but you can see we can switch between our media controls and then also our climate control. Heated seats for the driver and the passenger. And down below, you have options for connectivity or simply for fast charging and a USB-C again for fast charging. Still those same drive modes, uh, normal, sport, and smart with three terrain modes, snow, mud, and sand, as Gabby mentioned. We are going to have idle stop and go standard, auto hold, electronic parking brake, our parking sensors, and we'll take a look at that rear view camera too. So the tailgate's up, so that's great. Great shot of the roof. Great shot of the roof. And look the at stains. the stains. <gasps> but this is nice because you can see how clear this camera is. And also on this side, utilizing those parking sensors. <laughs> Are we back? I think we're back. Okay. Maybe not though. Does it say connecting, reconnecting? No. It's just the time is frozen. Girl. That's so us. <laughs> That's so Bradford That's Kia. So Kia oh, you know, it might still be going. Okay. Guys, if you're still on, let us know. If we're still on, that's tragic. Okay. Parking sensors. Are they on? Yeah. Okay, good. Parking <laughs> sensors. So if you are driving this vehicle and it is showing uh, that there, it's detecting the obstacle, it will be illuminated at the front and on the rear too. Space is all going to be the same. No sunglass holder, nothing like that. Same space in here. Let's take a look at the back seat though, because of course that's going to be one of our real differences. Okay. So something that the Sorento does very well is we have included in the rear is we have rear vents for the second row. We do not have them for the third row, but it is great to see them here for the second. And again, you can see we've got cloth seats. We still have USB-Cs, dual USB-Cs, and then a 12 volt down at the bottom. Uh, you have a great amount of space in the second row, which is really nice because, because this is an all-wheel drive vehicle. You don't have quite as big of a hump here. You get that more so when you're stepping into the third row. So again, I find that you have a great use of space in the back seat. You've got that bench seat, which a lot of people love and still a decent amount of headroom too. Do you want to show the people how easy it is to move? Absolutely. Seat? Also, we just got a question if this is a live review. Yes, yes it is. If you couldn't tell. <laughs> All right, this button up here, you'll get one on both the left and right. Mm -hmm. Give it a push, seat will fold and it will slide. If you're wondering why the seats didn't fold all the way earlier, it would have been this. Oh, the mats? Yeah, I'll take them oh, out. There we go. All right, Charlotte. I'm gonna take the hard way. Obviously, Gabby showed you it's a lot easier to get into this vehicle. The nice thing too is that every seat has car seat anchors. So you are able to put a lot of car seats in this bad boy. Now this is going to be a bonus row when it comes to your SUV, your third row. So again, you're not going to have a ton of space as you would in the second row or of course in the front row, but still a decent amount of space. I can close this in that way you guys can see. And it does recline, it's locked into place right now. But again, I love that I still have a USB-C back here. I have controls that way I can knock down the second row from back here too and a 12 volt. So I'll actually knock down that seat. Beautiful. So that's nice and easy that I can control it from there and then I'll step out and we will go take a look at the EX. This might be humbling. <laughs> I'm always so scared my shoe's gonna slip. All right, back to the EX. Also, I feel like Kia and Hyundai have been listening a lot to customer feedback lately. If you guys could ask for a hydraulic hood oh, lift, that would be great. I've got some feedback, don't you worry. I'll, I'll let you guys know what it is, don't worry. <laughs> Okay, so this is going to be our setup for the EX. You can already see there are some slight differences, namely the dirt. Um, that does come standard. Uh, nothing but the best here at Brainford Kia. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, just kidding. But you can still see that we have a uh, power driver seat. But one of our differences is you are going to get that upgraded leatherette seating. So again, super comfortable. Um, if you have, if you leave the window down and it rains, it won't absorb all in. Nice. <laughs> Let us know if you want us to try it though. Yeah. <laughs> and also one of my favorite features is that we're going to have a leather wrap and a heated steering wheel. We are seeing that introduced on this trim and our seats are still going to be that same heated um, configuration that we love. Screen is going to be the same, still going to have a push to start. And of course our infotainment screen is going to be the same, but I'll have Gabby come around and we'll talk about what's beneath it. Yeehaw. All right, I think I have to start turning off the live chat. <laughs> Some of these comments are too funny. I'm watching your face and it's so distracting. I don't even know what they're saying and I'm terrified. <laughs> okay, so like I said, we still have our same screen for phone projection, everything along those lines, but here's where your controls are gonna change. So you still have that switchable controller, but things are gonna look different. Namely because we do have a dual climate control in this vehicle too. So I can set it for how I would like it. Gabby can set it for a temperature that she would like. And then also you can for the, oh, there we go. Turn that off. <laughs> that was a lot. <laughs> Turn it back on. <laughs> I love car tech. Uh, where did the pros at our job? Can you tell I'm distracted today? <laughs> because I'm laughing. Uh, same heated seats as I mentioned. And then down below, you see we have the inclusion of a wireless phone charger. So you can have a completely wireless experience in this vehicle, which is something I love. You can have that wireless Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, while still charging your phone. Mm -hmm. If you do want connectivity, of course, you still have the same options as in the previous vehicle with connectivity and two USB-Cs. Same drive modes. We've got our heated steering wheel here, still have auto hold and idle stop and go, our parking sensors, and again, that rear view camera. I did move the tailgate down. And yeah, that's really gonna be it for our key features. Same space as I mentioned, but let's take a look at the captain's chairs. I will say captain's chairs are incredible to sit in. The comfort is unmatched. And if you don't like your passenger, you have a distance in between. Which is very nice. Yes. <laughs> so both of them are going to have armrests. They are still that leather at seating. And again, back here, we're still going to have our same pockets, rear air vents, USB-Cs, 12 volt cup holders, everything along those lines is going to be the same. You can get a little bit of a better look at that hump as I was mentioning. So this is where you're going to lose that leg room as you're heading into the third row. But you can see we still have ample space here in the second row. Um, space is really going to look the same when it comes to the third row, but I'll still hop back there. Oh, let's see if I can get this up. It's a little Ooh, bit of an awkward position. There we go. There's mats back here too. <laughs> I love that. So here you can see the space. Um, we're going to have our same features back here. We're still going to have a USB-C. We're still going to have the controls to knock down the second row seating and then also 12 volt cup holders, everything along, along those lines. Overall, because you do have the captain's chairs, this does feel a little bit more connected, maybe to the second and third row, and you're gonna have a little bit more space or feel like it, but not a huge difference. I will say, and I'll give you guys kind of my hot take. So I'm a parent, keep that in mind. Oh, slipping out there. Man, I'm kind of out of breath. <laughs> I've been sick the past couple days. But I'm a parent and my hot take is I love things that make my life easier and comfort features. I want to be comfortable when I'm driving. So I love the heated steering wheel. I love the heated seats. I love a leather at seating because it's easier to keep clean and a power tailgate. The one thing that I find that I need is I need more passenger space and maximum cargo space. <laughs> Did y'all see that? <laughs> oh man, which is why I think that if Kia designed the EX, with a bench seat in the middle or a removable bench seat, I think it would be a slam dunk every day of the week. So that is kind of my hot take. I can't believe my shoe just like gave out on me. Oh boy. Well, you know what? We have fun at work. So we, that is one thing. <laughs> the one thing we're gonna do is have a good time. Okay. Um, real question, does it have air vents in the third row? Any of the trims? It does not for no. the Sorento. The previous body, you could um, control the air vent flow and obviously turn them on or off, but there is none in this model. Oh boy. Man, what a day. Mark, you are right. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. It has been a day. It's been, Can you tell we're a little off today? It's been a year, actually. <laughs> All right. Um, 
scroll back to the top and answer all my relevant questions. Zoran commented that, so I'm gonna assume that there's not anything relevant there. I love that. But, uh, we need a good camera, yep. Gabby's <laughs> kneecap check, yep. I work at Tim Hortons, yep. Uh, Steve said, got to play with the top of the line EV9 yesterday, very fun. I love the styling inside and out. Mm -hmm. And he also loves the Sorento PHEV SX. Sweet. So what do you guys think about these vehicles? So obviously the biggest difference is going to be the powertrain and then also the seating configuration, everything like that. Um, you're going to add a little bit more comfort features when it comes to the EX, but mm -hmm. those are going to be the, the, big ones. the big differences. So what would you pick? I'm curious. Because it is a price jump, but it may not necessarily be as much as you may think. And I think it would be completely worth it for the EX. Like I said, I'd love to see it in a seven seater configuration. Um, EV9 video turned out great. Thank you, thank you. Can you do a review of the Kia EV5? Absolutely, but once it arrives. We gotta get one. <laughs> gotta get one first, yeah, that's the big thing. Um, <laughs> comment on the 14 cent gas increase price increase on gas tonight ladies are these gas guzzling suvs a smart choice to push so i will say obviously neither of these are hybrid but this renter does come in a hybrid option if you're looking for it they're not overly bad on gas i'll say obviously it's going to be worse than something like a compact car or a forte but um i will say my mom she has a sorrento phdv it's been at car star for two months because we love someone smacked her car up real good and uh, she's driving a Ford Edge V6 engine, and she wants to cry because almost every other day she's getting gas. Yeah. And that thing just burns fuel. So when we're looking at vehicles in that sense, these are phenomenal on fuel. So they're four cylinders. They're not overly thirsty. The turbo actually does a little bit better on the highway than the naturally aspirated one, which is, you know, something you don't hear every day. Because yeah. you get so much more power in that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you drive them smart, you're not flooring it at every green light, mm -hmm. then... You can expect fairly decent fuel efficiency. The color on these vehicles, I saw Andrew's question, is both the same as ebony black. Um, there was another question mm -hmm. I saw too. And Zoran, also, we are filling up any cars that need gas tonight at the dealership today. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, Zoran with the relevant questions. Yeah, good job, Zoran. Why can't you ask the Bell or Rogers people to build a direct fiber line to your dealership for a better connection? So fiber optic isn't actually available where we are. Yeah. So we are still on the rural side of things, I'll say. Yeah, like, there's the a metropolis farm. of Brantford. Yeah, there's a farm just down the street. So <laughs> it's not something we can get right now. Um, it's okay, Gabby, I have a spare hairbrush. Guys, it's raining. I was outside, you know. It's been We were a in the elements. Day. The elements. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, All terrain. a little crazy today. Uh, for the price, MSRP at the yeah, or the LX is 38,975 versus 42,975. Yep. So $4,000 increase, which I get, like that that's a lot and isn't gonna be for everyone's budget. I do think it is worth it. Absolutely. Um, with that being said, do you think we should end off today's live video? Probably. It's been a crazy one, but if you guys have been here throughout the entirety of the live stream, congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. You're entitled to some sort of compensation. Yes. Mm. Not from us, though. <laughs> not, yeah, not from us. Um, let us know if there's anything else you would like to see regarding the Sorrentos. We have a few on our lot right now. Uh, other than that, we are posting a shorter, summed up version of what we just did today at 6 p.m. So if you'd like to get the uh, kind of key points or hot points, watch that video. And if you don't want to, please still consider watching that video with the ads on. Twice. <laughs> Twice. Thanks for watching, you guys. Bye. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs>